Yeah, here we go. Oh, here's, oh, this is a really good one. My name is Megan Anderson and I'm an extension field agronomist for Iowa State University and I'm standing out in a cereal rye cover crop plot here today uh, where a grad student is actually researching, uh, looking at different termination timings and different uh, seeding rates for cereal rye uh, to see how they might affect weed pressure in soybeans. Uh, one of the most common discussion topics that we have with a lot of farmers here in Iowa looking for alternatives to herbicides to suppress uh, weeds is looking at the possibility of using a cover crop in that soybean year. One of the most important weeds that uh, we run into here in Iowa that farmers would like to get some additional help controlling is going to be water hemp. So that's one of the primary factors uh, that we're looking at in these research plots. So this grad student, uh, in his research, he's actually using three different termination timings. Uh, so the far termination timing, they actually terminated a week before they planted soybeans. That would have happened in really early May this year. Uh, the second termination timing happened uh, the day of planting for soybeans. So in this case, this year, that, that occurred right about May 13th or 14th. And then right here behind me, uh, we actually terminated this two weeks after the soybeans were planted. Uh, so when it comes to cereal rye and suppressing weeds, the name of the game is having a lot of biomass present to actually reduce the amount of uh, sunlight and uh, provide some competition uh, for those weeds as they're germinating. So that's the point here and you can see that we have a lot of uh, biomass here and there's a lot of cereal rye that has been, especially in this last termination date after soybean planting and you can see the beans are coming up there. Uh, but we get a really nice visual and you can actually see differences in, in the weed pressure in these different plots based on how much biomass is there. Okay, so when we're out here, like in the earlier terminated plots, which these were still terminated pretty late for Iowa, kind of the first week in May, um, especially for this year with everything that was planted so early, uh, this was a uh, little bit of a later termination timing but it might be fairly typical for a normal year and you can see here that there's a lot of bare ground in these plots and there's a lot of weeds coming up and uh, one thing that I notice in these plots more than the other ones is that I'm seeing a lot more winter annual weed pressure uh, as well as a lot more water hemp that's big um, so if we come and we look closely here you can see things um, I don't know if my shadow is right in that you can see things like mare's tail coming up. And then we can see small seeded weed species that we would expect some cereal rye to, to help suppress if we've got a good cover. Uh, we can see a lot of different sizes of water hemp, maybe as tall as a few inches tall, all the way down to ones that just have their cotyledons and maybe their first couple leaves starting out. Uh, so again, a lot of bare ground in this plot uh, because of partially has to do with seeding rate and uh, how well it establishes in the fall, so timing of seeding. Uh, but you can see here that, that there just wasn't a lot of rye here, especially with that early termination timing. Um, and so there's a lot more bare ground for those weeds to come up. So if we look at another one, so this was the termination timing uh, that was actually at the same time as, as planting. Um, so this was kind of the second week in May. And just looking across the plot, you can visually see not as many weeds coming up through it. And if we go out in here and actually get out in the plots, you could see some of these areas where there's really good rye down. You know, there's not really a lot of weeds coming up, but anywhere that we're still getting spaces we get some water hemp coming through. But notice how the biggest water hemp out here is uh, maybe an inch and a half tall, whereas we are seeing more like three inch tall water hemp in the earlier terminated plots. Um, and where there's really good rye residue cover, we're just not seeing really any weeds come through that. And so one of the tough things with using cereal rye for weed suppression is getting a consistent enough stand and consistent enough residue cover that we can actually uh, 
prevent weeds from making it through that cover. And so that's something that's that's tough to manage and we can actually see it out here in these plots where we get some really good weed control, but any place where there's a gap, we are starting to see weeds come through. Uh, one of the really neat things about it though is that it can delay uh, that weed emergence long enough that when we come back in here with our post-emergence herbicide application, if we were gonna spray all these plots at the same time, we're gonna have a lot smaller weeds to spray out here than we are in those earlier terminated plots. And uh, that's gonna mean hopefully more consistent weed control uh, that we'll see with our post-emergence applications. So one of the practices that's uh, probably quite a bit more experimental uh, at this point is letting that cover crop actually continue continue to grow after soybean planting. Uh, that's pretty uncommon and one of the concerns is the risk that that might po pose to soybean yield. And so actually in these plots we are going to take all these to yield and you can see that if we go and we look in at the soybeans in these plots you can see that they're quite a bit leggier. Um, so these are actually the first leaves, the cotyledons, and they're probably a good four or more inches off the ground. So uh, this rye in these plots is actually reducing the amount of sunlight that those plants are getting. And so we will be taking these yield and seeing what effect that has. But this, if it doesn't have a yield effect or, or an effect uh, on other factors that we would be concerned about with our cash crop, uh, this of course is one way to really maximize the amount of biomass that we might see out here. Hey, that was really coherent. Did you hear that? That was awesome. That was great. I'll be the judge of that. All right, fine.